Well, we get to talk about ratios and rates right now. Have you guys ever heard of a ratio before? Yeah. Yes. Have you heard of a rate before? Yeah. By the way, these, these, last, uh, these last two chapters, well, there's three chapters. Chapter 10 is pretty much designed to make you succeed at Math A and Math C. But chapters <coughs> 6 and 7 are basically designed to get you to be successful in, in life, life math. This is stuff that you see every single day, rates and ratios. Uh, if you get pulled over by a cop, right, what do you, what do you tell him? You, the, he asks you, how fast are you going? What do you say? I don't know. No, I say, I was under the speed limit, officer. <laughs> I'm lying right now. But like, let's say you're going, your speedometer, what's your speedometer say when, when he pulls you over? 75. 75 what? Per mile. 75 no. miles per hour. Miles per hour. That's a ratio. That's a rate, actually. That's a rate. You deal with those all the time. You ever cooked anything in your life? Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever have to double a recipe? Yeah. That's a ratio, all right? So when, when we double things, that's a ratio. When you're comparing uh, price per pound, or p price per pound, or price per ounce, dollars per ounce, things like that, you're, you're talking about rates and ratios. So we deal with these things all the time. In chapter seven, we're gonna talk about how to find out um, sale price, discount price, increase price, your commission, if you work commission. Anybody work commission in here? Do you know what commission means? Yeah, you get paid for what you sell, um, you get an extra. You get a percentage of what you sell. So if you have 10% commission, that means if you sell $1,000, you get 100 bucks. That's pretty cool. So it, it, it motivates you to sell more. We're gonna talk about commission. So these last couple chapters really are designed to get you to be successful in your math lives. It's kind of important, right? Not like balance a checkbook type stuff, but pretty much everything else. So ratios and rates. We're gonna talk about ratios first. Here's what you need to know about a ratio. A ratio basically just compares two numbers. That's all a ratio is. In fact, you've seen ratios before. That whole fraction section that we did, every fraction is automatically a ratio. It's just comparing two numbers. So a ratio, what we're talking about is a comparison of quantities with the same units. same units. The same units is important because that's what signifies the difference between a ratio and a rate. You see, race, rates are going to have different units. That's where we get like miles per hour, hour, miles per gallon. Ratios don't have that. Ratios compare two things with the same units. For instance, if we are out there on, on the track and I said, okay, we're going to shot put, and I throw it 30 yards, and you throw it 10 yards, well then, that's a comparison that we can make, right? I threw it 30 yards and you threw it 10 yards. That's three times as far, but you know, whatever. Not, not comparing or anything. Uh, but that, that right there, that's a ratio. It's a comparison of those two numbers. Let's, let's simplify a little bit. Let's say that um, instead we were picking up, I don't know, a desk and you threw a desk. I threw it three feet, you threw it 10 feet. That's one way that we can represent that ratio. Notice how the units are the same, those feet. From here on out, we're gonna to have to write the units on our, all our problems, because they're, they're important for us. You gotta tell me what you're talking about. Now, when, I'm sorry, when we get to rates, we're gonna to to, to to do that. So, we can write ratios three different ways. First way, we can always write a ratio as a fraction. For instance, for us, we already have that on the board, three-tenths, three-tenths. You also might have seen ratios before with a little dot, dot, that colon. You ever seen ratios with a colon? Mm -hmm. Like three to one or something like that. Uh, gear ratios, if you're into automotives at all, uh, you'll, you'll talk about rear end gear differentials and you'll be like a, like a 3.4 to, to one or something like that, which means the, the uh, 
the front has to turn 3.4 times for every one rotation of your tires. Uh, that's what that means. People deal with those all the time. Your, your gearing to your car, are, are those are all ratios from your transmission to your, your rear differential. Well, there's a whole lot of ratios that go on there actually, but that's a very simple, simplified version. So you could write this with a colon. If you write a ratio with a colon, here's how you do it. Please pay attention to how this, this works. This is 3 over 10. This is 3 over 10 is our fraction. With the colon, you'd write 3 colon 10. Looks like a time, like 310. How we say these is a couple different ways. We could say, if we're talking about ratios, 3 to 10 or 3 to 10. You ever heard that 2 part yeah. when you say a ratio, 3 to 10? Yeah. That, that colon stands for the word 2, 3 to 10. Or you could actually write it with the word 2. And actually spell it out. 3 to 10. So three ways you can write a ratios. <clears throat> Note one, one thing. When we're dealing with ratios, for instance, like this one, can you write this one as a ratio all three ways? Let's, let's try that. Ratio of 15 miles to 45 miles. We're going to do that right now. First way we could write this is as a fraction. Y'all tell me which number is going to go on the top, 15 or 45? 15. So we go 15 miles over 45 miles. Hey, hey, that's a fraction. Can you reduce fractions? Yes. That means you can also reduce ratios. They are fractions. Let me show you a couple things that happen here that's unique to ratios. Watch on the board. When your units are the same, they actually do simplify in your expression. So you don't actually have to write the miles anymore if your units are the same. That happens with ratios. It doesn't happen with rates. With rates, your units will be different. You must write them. But with ratios, we don't write our units. We'd say that this is the same thing as, well, how much is 15 over 45? We'd reduce that. You get 15 goes in 15 one time, 45 three times. You would get a ratio of 1 to 3, or 1 third. That's your ratio. You'd say 1 third or 1 to 3. Now, can you write this with the colon, and can you write that with the 2? That's another yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. As a colon, which is going to come first, the 1 or 3? One. We'd say 1 to 3. Or as the, as the word 2, you'd say, yeah, these are basically the same. You're reducing a fraction. 15 over 45 is 1 third. So a couple little notes here. When you're talking about ratios, the units aren't written. We don't write the units for ratios. So the units are like the miles? Units are not written for the ratios, so yeah, that's like your, your miles or your feet or your inches. Then why did you write miles in a fraction? Notice how I got rid of them. Oh. Also, you need to know that your ratios can be reduced. They can be simplified. Okay, so let's, let's recap some ratios here real quick. I'll give you some examples in just a moment. I'll move on to rates. So ratios, they're simply a comparison of two numbers with the same units. So we have one number over another number. It's basically a fraction. We don't write the units for a ratio since they're the same. They're implied to be the same. We can reduce them. We can write them in three different formats. Fraction, uh, 1 colon 3 or 1 2 3. That's pronounced 1 2 3 either case. Now let's go ahead and try to figure out some of these other things.
Okay, 1.68 to 4.8. Hey, firstly, could you write this in, in a different format? Yeah. What could you sure. replace that word two with? With a fraction. fraction. I, could, I could do a fraction, or I could do the, the colon. Oh, yeah. I could do 1.68 to 4.8 like that. That's possible. Also, if I made this into a fraction, what number would go on top? 1.68. By the way, I don't know if your book does this, but I want to show you another thing that you can do with, with these ratios. If you translate that to a fraction, what you can also do is you could get rid of those decimal places. Here's how you do it. Notice how you have a decimal on both the top and the bottom, right? You move the decimal in the same direction on both the numerator and denominator, the appropriate number of places to get rid of any decimals that you have. For instance, if I was looking at the 1.68 over the 4.8, which one has to move more? How many times does it have to move? Two. That means I would have to move this one how many places? Two. What would I have to put there? Zero. That means this is the same fraction as 168 over 480. Now, you all have your calculators, right? Because I've asked you to bring them from now on. So hopefully you should have those taken off. Now, on your calculator, can I see your, your calculator sign? On your calculator, if you have a scientific calculator, you're going to have a fraction button. With your fractions, what's kind of cool about your calculator, it'll simplify your fractions automatically. You don't have to do that anymore in this class because you, you now have a calculator available to you. If you punch in that fraction, you'll put 168. There's a little fraction symbol over here. It should be like an A, B, C, something, something like that. Let's see. Of course, I can't find this on Brian's calculator. And over D. Thanks, you Brian. That I did. Yeah. Over 480, you punch in your fraction. I don't know if you can see that on the screen right there. You punch in 168 over 480, press Enter, and it will automatically reduce that to you, for you. It'll give you 7 over 20. That's kind of cool with your calculator, right? If you haven't brought a calculator, you need to start bringing it. It's a requirement for this class from here on out. Uh, you start bringing it every single day. So if you reduce that, you're going to get 7 over 20. So there's lots of different ways you can represent that, that ratio. In fact, as a matter of fact, could you write this a different way? Could you write that as 7 colon 20? Sure. Yeah. sure. 7 to 20? Absolutely. There's lots of ways you can represent our ratios. Let's see. Let's go ahead. Why don't you do one on your own? Let's do 2.5 to 3.15. I'd like you to write that as a fraction, get rid of the decimal like I just showed you, and then reduce that fraction. Hey, what's the first thing you're supposed to do? Uh, change, change, the decimal. Change, the decimal. change the decimal. Yeah, you have a choice, really. You can move the decimals right now, or you can make it into a fraction right now. It honestly doesn't matter. What you do have to do, though, is make sure you have the appropriate number on the top and the bottom of your ratio. How many places do you have to move your decimal here? Two. One place is just going to move it here. That's not going to be good enough for me because I'm still going to have 31.5 on the bottom. I can't have any decimal anywhere in order for us to deal with these ratios appropriately. 
You guys with me? Yeah. So another place is going to give me the 315. However, numerator, what do I have to put in there? Zero. Zero. So this translates to a 250 over 315. Raise your hand if you made it that far. Good deal. Now, you punch 250 fraction, 350, not divide, they'll give you decimal. But 250 fraction 315, and you press enter, and that will give you your ratio. Did anyone do that? Yeah. What'd you get? 50 over 63. Anybody else get 50 over 63? Yep. Yeah. Could you find it by hand? Sure, it's going to take you longer. So our ratio is 50 to 63. Now there's one more thing we got to talk about ratios. We're going to look at how to find a ratio between mixed numbers, which is kind of interesting. It's going to bring up some old stuff for us. Then we'll talk about rates. So last type of ratio we're going to deal with. How about if we do two and two thirds and one and thirteen fifteenths? Two and two thirds and one and thirteen fifteenths. I'm sorry. I said and. I meant two. Hey, first things first. Could you set that up as a fraction for, from, a, from this ratio? Yeah. yeah. What's going to go on the top? Um, two, two over two thirds. Two over what? One. Okay, now stick with me. You guys are okay on that, right? Yeah. First thing goes on top, second thing goes on the bottom of our ratio. Now, wait a second. Do you guys notice that these are mixed numbers? Can you change them to improper fractions? Yes. yes. Let's do that. On the numerator, what's up, what's that as an improper fraction, please? Eight thirds. You agree this is eight thirds, right? What's this one? Good. Hey, hey, hey! Look, look. Have you done that before? Yeah. Sure. You now have a fraction over a fraction. A fraction. What's this mean? Divide. Yeah, the main fraction bar means we're dividing. <coughs> so 8 thirds divided by 28 fifteenths. Oh, this should be coming back to you. You just had a test on this. What are you going to do here? Flip, flip. flip the first, the second, or both? Second. The second one. So we're going to have 8 thirds times 15 over 28. Of course, now we're multiplying, and we can simplify. Three goes in three one time into five, five times. What goes into both those? Four. Two times and seven. You get ten to seven. So even if we have mixed numbers going into a ratio, we can still simplify that ratio a whole lot. This is. 10 to 7. Could you also write it back in this format? Yeah. Sure. This would be the same thing as 10 to 7 or 10 to 7. It's a way to make our ratios look a whole lot better because if you walk up to someone and go, oh yeah, you're uh, 2 and 2 thirds to 1 and 13 fifteenths, they're going to go, what? But if you go 10 to 7, they're like, oh yeah, okay. 10 of these parts to every 7 of those parts. That makes a whole lot more sense than doing it this way, doesn't it? Yeah. And so we can simplify our ratios a whole lot by just using a little bit of fraction knowledge. How many people feel okay with, with doing these so far? Good, I'm gonna give you one on your own, just like this one, practice it, then we'll move on to rates, and you got. So let's do, I'd like you to simplify this ratio, two and five eighths, to eight and three fourths. So again, remember, we're writing that as a fraction first. Then we're changing it to an improper fraction. Then we're doing our division.
Looks like we're about done. So if we're looking at a ratio like this one, we get some mixed numbers. Of course, the first thing we got to do is realize that this really does mean a fraction. We've got 2 and 5 eighths all over 8 and 3 fourths. Now, in order to do anything with mixed numbers, we really change them into a proper. That's, that's our norm here. So we do 16, 17, 18, 18, 18 21 over 8 all over, what is that, 35? Thirty-five over four. Now we realize this is really just a division problem. This means twenty-one eighths divided by thirty-five over four. Raise your hand if you made it that far, folks. Good for you. you guys, here? Yes? No? Yeah. All right. Next up, we go. Okay, division problems. We've mastered that already. We're just going to do twenty-one over eight. We'll multiply after we reciprocate the second fraction. Of course, I have you make one problem out of that with a couple dots signifying you know that's multiplication. Then we simplify it. We're doing, looking at the 8 and the 4. 4 goes into that one time, into 8 two times. And 7 goes into both those numbers, 3 times, 5 times. So we get 3 to 10. And if you'd like to, if your book asks you for it, you could also write this as 3 to 10. Would I just screw up? Yeah. Oh no. So, or three to oh, ten. Oh, you can. I didn't. I didn't know you could. Uh, there was a number that went twenty. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys with me on this stuff here so far? Do you feel okay about ratios at least? So ratios, really, we're just comparing two numbers. That's it. Whether they're fractions or decimals, we now know how to deal with those decimals with the decimal place. We now know how to deal with those fractions, change them into improper, we're dividing. There's no units that are written, and we for sure can reduce them. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about are these rates. Now, i got to tell you, rates and ratios are really, really similar. You can do everything with rates that you could do with ratios. Everything, we can reduce them, we can do all the same stuff. The only difference between them is where ratios compare two numbers with the same units. Feet to feet, inches to inches, gallons to gallons, dollars to dollars. Rates compare two different things, uh, sorry, two quantities with different units. For instance, like when you go to a grocery store, dollars per gallon, or dollars per pound, or miles per gallon, or miles per hour. You often hear that per in there, right? That signifies you're dealing with a rate. So rates, just like a ratio, you're still comparing two quantities, but now they have different units. So you tell me, what's the only difference between ratios and rates? Uh, different, the, un or the units. The units, that's it. In ratios, the units are the same, you don't have to write them. In rates, the units are different, and you do have to write them. You guys want another party? Uh-oh. 
<laughs> we'll have a coffee party this time. You guys want to have a coffee party? I'm very excited about this. Some of you are just like, whatever. Yeah, we're not going to actually have a party. But let's say you did have a party. And you have this huge gathering of people. And these people love their coffee. And so what you're going to do is you're going to make nine gallons of coffee for every 50 people. That's a lot of coffee. <laughs> they must really They're very love caffeinated people at this party. They really love their coffee. You make nine gallons of coffee for every 50 people. Can you write that as a comparison? Can you write that as a rate, basically? Now, why can't we, why don't you tell me, why can't we compare these two numbers as a ratio? They're not the same units. Well, we're not even talking about the same thing, are we? Here we're talking about gallons of coffee. Here we're talking about people. Gallons and people aren't the same. Last time I checked, it'd be weird. So we can certainly compare this. If, we're, if we make nine gallons of coffee to every 50 people, let's write this as a, as a fraction. What's going to go on the top of our fraction? Nine, nine what? Yeah, good. You've got to show that because you, you now know how, you now need to show what you're talking about. Here we're talking about nine gallons, and we're talking about compared to how much? Fifty people. Fifty people. Now, typically, you only write these rates one way. You just write them as a fraction. Uh, that's how we see them in, in real life. That's how we deal with them in real life. Ratios, yeah, you have these three ways to write them. With rates, we don't. We're just writing. A fraction with make sure you put those units and you're good to go. You can still simplify these things, but the units are definitely written. Okay, ready for another one? Sure. Let's say that you're driving down the road and you go. How far is LA from here? Five hours. Five hours. Miles wise. About 265. 275. Let's say 300 just yeah. to make it easy, okay? Let's say you go 300 and. Oh, you said 275? Yeah. That's what it says outside of Brazil. Let's do 260. Okay, 260. I live in Madeira. 260 miles. And we'll do five hours. No, no, no. 12 hours. You're going slow. You ride a bike. <laughs> You're riding a bike. <laughs> or you run really fast. Oh. Uh, that's optimistic, right? You make it 12 hours. Can you represent this as, as a ratio? Yeah. A ratio. No. No. Why not a ratio? Can okay, I represent it as a rate? Yes. Yes. Let's do that. What's going to go on the top of our fraction? 260 miles. Good. The first thing listed is the first thing that goes on the top of your fraction. You're saying 260 miles. You're comparing it to the two hours that you're, you're driving it in or running in or whatever. And it takes you 12 hours because you are a slow but careful driver. Very careful. You're very careful. You're going to run over on the freeway. <laughs> or maybe you made a lot of stops. I don't know what, it's going to be, what you do. But you went 260 miles in the 12 hours. Are you okay with this rate? Yes. No. No. No? Why not? The bigger ones, the top is bigger than the bottom. Does that Does matter? It matter? No. It doesn't matter. We had the top bigger than the bottom over here, too. It doesn't matter as far as the, the top being bigger than the bottom. It matters that the first thing that's listed goes on the top. The second thing that's listed is on the bottom. Are you okay getting from here to here, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. yes. Good. Now, can you reduce that? Yes. 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 Then you should do that. Of course, you can plug that into your calculator. But if you do it, it might give you a mixed number. Now, I don't want a mixed number out of this. I don't want a mixed number. What I want out of this thing is an improper fraction. So if you plug that in your calculator and it gives you a mixed number, you press second and the fraction button again, and it should translate that back into an improper fraction. 65 over 3. Thank you. Wait, 65, 65 what? Miles. Over three what? Hours. Here's what this says. This says if it took you, listen, listen carefully. Hopefully, I'm not losing you here. I know some of you 
you, you think you already have this. Um, if you went 260 miles in 12 hours, what that means is that you probably went 65 miles in three hours, true? Yes. Could you figure out how far you went in one hour? How would you figure that out? If we divide that, that's going to give us what's called a unit rate. The unit rate is what you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. When you get pulled over by a cop and they go, hey, how fast are you going? And you go, oh, I was going 65 miles over three hours, officer. You just go, are you, are you, seriously? Hey, you don't, you don't really say that. You say, well, I was going 45 miles per hour or, or 21 miles. You said that, actually? Me? Yeah. No. Oh, that'd be funny, though. <laughs> if you had yeah, pulled over, you said that. You're 65 over 3. That's how fast I was going. Awesome. Now we don't really say that. We say a unit rate most of the time. We'll start that next time. The last thing I want you to write this write down, though. Still with me, folks. Yes. You need to write down that these things can still be reduced. So be sure to reduce. And also, you absolutely must write the units when you're talking about rates. You have to. Units are written. If I can spell written. Units are written. Did you understand rates and ratios, folks? Yes. All right. How about mean, median, mode? Yes. Bam. How far is it to LA? Two hundred seventy-five. Two sixty-five. Doesn't matter. Two seventy-five. Two seventy-five for what? Miles. How long does it take you to get to LA? Five hours. Five hours. Six hours. Which one? Five. 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 Six. Six hours. Okay. Six hours. Well, from from here, obviously. <laughs> Now that includes like you start and then you get there. So like not the speed you're going, but how long does it actually take to get there? It's like five hours? <laughs> I'm actually not sure. Five hours. I've been down there a long time. Five hours? It includes like a stop somewhere maybe? Yeah, stretch your legs. Okay, great. So, so if you go to LA, it's 275 miles and maybe it takes you five hours. Now, I talked about this last time, but if you get pulled over by a cop and you're going down the road and they say, well, how fast were you going? Are you going to say, well, officer, I was going 275 miles over five hours. Are you going to tell them that? No. Yeah, I would just be a smart guy. But, uh, but probably not. You're probably going to say, I was going 70 miles per hour or 80 miles per hour or 65 miles per hour. Aren't you going to say something like that? That per hour, what that's called is a unit rate. So when you read things like this, you say, uh, you say, I was getting 26 miles per gallon. 26 miles per gallon. What is that? What's that represent, by the way? 26 miles per gallon. Every 26 miles, you use a gallon of gas. Great. So that, that's your that's your fuel consumption, right? That's your gas mileage. You get 26 miles per gallon. It's not bad. It's about what I get in my car. 26 miles per gallon. Not the best. Those silly Priuses you see everywhere. You get like they say like 60 or something. Anybody have a Prius? No. That's what they say. It's like 60 miles a gallon. They do better in town. Than they do. They do. Uh, they do. Because uh, on the freeway, they use more gas. Yeah. But anyway. If you say 26 miles per gallon, what does it? What do you assume about this? This is 26 miles you get to go for how many gallons? How many gallons does this say? One. One. So if I say I get 26 miles per gallon, that means for one gallon I was able to go 26 miles. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. This unit rate is always a denominator <laughs> of one. That's what makes it a unit. That unit signifies that it's over one unit. So we reduce it to the, to the point to which we can say the word per, which means over one. 
So if we get 26 miles per gallon, that means for every 26 miles, I'm using one gallon of gas. Or in other words, for every one gallon of gas, I get to go 26 miles. This thing right here is a unit rate. So unit rate, I'll put a little definition up here for you. This is a rate where the denominator is one. A rate where the denominator is one, and you know what? It usually uses that word per. Whenever you see that word per, you say the word per, you are talking about a unit rate. Did you ever use that word per in real life? Well, I don't mean like you're talking to a cat. Oh, per, kitty per. No, that, not that type of per. Right? Or whatever they do, stupid cats. But uh, what's the word? Use use the word per in context. So this usually uses the word per. Think of some for me. Think of some for me. What what are some instances where you actually use the word per? Words per minute. Words per minute. Typing. Great. So you might type 45 words <coughs> per minute. 45 words per minute. How many words are you typing every single minute? So this says you get to type 45 words, and it's only taking you one minute. So that's our unit rate. Whenever you use that word per, you mean over one. That's a denominator of one. What's another one? Go to a grocery store. You always see stuff at grocery stores with per all the time. Dollars per pound. Dollars per pound, yeah. You ever buy steak before or chicken? It's always dollars per pound. It's like uh, chicken should be somewhere around two forty nine a pound, uh, unless you get frozen. It's like one ninety nine a pound or something like that. And steaks a little bit more expensive. They go upwards of seven dollars a pound if you want pretty good steak. So we could do seven forty nine per pound. That's expensive, right? That's like uh, I don't even know what that is. What's seven forty nine a pound? New York's. Beyond, that's even more. That's like nine ninety nine a pound. Yeah. So New probably York. a New York New York steak if they're not on sale would be about seven fifty nine. So that means that you're paying seven dollars and forty nine cents for every one pound of meat. That's a lot. By the way, can you abbreviate pounds? You know what the abbreviation is for pound? LB. Good. So this doesn't mean 11 pounds, right? This means one, like LBS, one pound, one pounds. By the way, we, we spoke about this earlier, but if I have this rate, I'm going to get back to this one, this 275 miles over five hours, we said you're not really going to tell the cop I was going 275 miles over five hours. You're going to tell him I was going something miles per hour. Is there a way we can convert a rate into a unit rate? How? Divide. It's a division problem. This does mean divide, right? 275 over 5. If we divide that, what we're going to end up doing is changing this number into a 1, into a unit rate. So we can convert any rate into a unit rate by division. So make that little note over here. We can convert any rate into a unit rate simply by dividing. Let's try that. If you went 275 miles over five hours, let's do that division. You have calculators. If you want to use your calculator, no problem. I would recommend that. Take your calculators out. Let's do 275 divided by five. Tell me what that, you can do it mathematically because it is divisible by five, but you can do it on a calculator as well. How much are you going to get? 55. 55? 
Okay, 55, 55 what? Miles per hour. I want you to notice a couple things. Please watch here, up here on the board. When you're converting a rate to a unit rate, notice how the, the top units was miles and the bottom units was hours. You with me? The top units is what you're going to say first. So it's still going to be 55 miles over one hour. So that doesn't switch around or anything. It's not 55 hours per mile. Well, that'd be ridiculous. You're going really slow, right? It's 55, whatever your rate is on the numerator, miles per hour. In fact, if you want to show one intermediary step right here, here's what you really did. You really simply reduced this fraction. 55, uh, so, sorry, 275 over 5 is the same thing as 55 over 1. You just now have your hours still. This is 55 miles over one hour. That means every hour you went 55 miles. Or you could say 55 miles per hour. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this 55 miles per hour idea? Now, one question I have for you. If you drive down to LA, are you really going to be going 55 miles an hour? No, but you might be taking some stops here and there, right? Or you might hit some traffic. So, I mean, you really, you can't go from Merced to L.A. and go 70 miles an hour the whole way. It's impossible. Because in Merced, you're not going to go 70, right? You're, you're going to go like 35 down G Street. You're going to stop at stoplights. So you're going to be going zero for a while, right? Then you're going to be going like 80 down the freeway. Then you're going to hit traffic and go like 40 for a while. Then you're going to be getting off and getting some Panda Express, you know. Of course, you've got to do that on the way to L.A. Then you're going to get back on the freeway. You can, your speed's going to be fluctuating, but on average, remember we're talking about on average? This is a way that you can do an average. A unit rate will do that for you. You're dividing the total number of miles that you went by the number of hours that you traveled it in. That's giving you an average rate. That's what this is. Let's try one more. Let's say your buddy comes to you and uh, says, yeah, I got a pretty good job. I got a pretty good job. I make $82 a day. I make $82 a day. He said, we got another, we got room for you on the, on the team. I can give you a job if you want, but you're only going to get five hours of work. This guy works eight hours, it's by the hour. He, this guy works eight hours a day. That's, that's his day, okay? His day is eight hours. So here when I say a day, I mean eight hours. So let's say he comes to you and goes, I make 82 bucks a day. I can give you a similar job, but you're only going to get five hours of work. You're going to get five hours of work out of this thing. Well, you're probably not going to be making $82, are you? If you're not if you're working by the hour, you're going to be making less than that. But you're probably going to want to find out how much you're going to make, right? It means you probably want to know how much you can make per hour. Is there a way we'd figure out how much this guy makes per hour? Yeah. Sure. If he makes $82 for eight hours, well that's a rate. $82 for 8 hours. How can you change that into a unit rate? Divide. Divide. Yeah, take your calculators out or divide this longhand if you'd like. Do it on your own. Uh, don't say it loud. I want everyone to work on this. But find out how many dollars per hour they're making. So change this rate into a unit rate. How much did I make? Uh, Seven? More like ten. Ten twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Ten twenty-five. You, you divide eighty-two by eight. Yes. Divide eighty-two by eight. It goes in at least ten times. Eight goes into eighty at least ten times. So you got to be over ten. Hopefully on your calculator or you do this longhand, you get ten point two five. Ten point two five what? Dollars. Dollar hour. An hour. So ten point two five. That's the amount of dollars. And he gets that every single hour. You can also see units, unit rates written like that. That's very, very common to see the dollars over just the symbol hour. Because it's implied that there's only one hour there with a the unit rate. So oftentimes you'll see like dollars per pound. You'll see it like this. 
749 per pound. You ever seen that before in the store? In the store? Or per gallon or per, per hour like that. That's, that's our unit rate. Like I said, we, we see this stuff day to day. I mean, you're always talking about miles per gallon or uh, miles per hour, dollars per hour. That's how much people get paid. Uh, would you take the job? Do you get paid 1025? Yeah, I would too. That's not bad. bad. Part time job for myself. I pay for my turbocharger somehow. <laughs> Okay, so let's practice a couple things. We'll review a little bit about our rates, have you do some, uh, some ratios again, talk about some unit rates, and then we'll move on to the next section. So here's some practice for you. The first thing I'd like you to do, write this ratio in the three different ways that we can write it. Write 12 to 8 as a ratio three different ways. There's three ways to write a ratio. Next one, you need 20 bags of seed to plant 8 acres full of uh, a wheat. Find the rate. <laughs> Lastly, you can drive 435 miles on 7 gallons of gas. That's extraordinary gas mileage. Find your fuel consumption as a unit rate. So first one, practicing those ratios. Remember to write it as a fraction first, though, because a fraction you can reduce, and then you can write it as those other two ways. That's what I'd like to see out of the first one. Write it as a fraction first, then reduce the fraction, then write it the other two ways. You follow me on that? Okay. The next one, write that as a rate. Not a unit rate, just a rate. Reduce it if you can. Third one, take that and write that as a unit rate. That's what I want to see. Alright, so number one, first thing, ratios, you can write them as fractions with that colon or with the word two. Now, it's already written with the word two, but it's not reduced. So the first thing I've asked you to do, write this as a fraction first. What number goes on the top? Twelve. So twelve over eight, and you're going to reduce that. That get becomes, what was that? Three over two. So the first way you can write a ratio is three to two. If you have something in the ratio of 12 to 8, it's the same ratio as 3 to 2. For every 12 parts, you have 8 parts, or for every 3 parts, you have 2 parts. It's the most simple way you can write your ratio. Also, you could write this as 3 to 2, or 3 to 2. Any of those ways will work. I've asked for all three here. How many people had all three of those? Good deal. All right, that's fantastic. Now, next up, let's see the plant in the field. 
maybe corn or wheat. I don't know what you what y'all plant. You plant corn? Yes. There's a lot of people plant corn around here. I mean, if you're into dairy beefs at all, they're always planting corn and wheat. I used to live on a dairy for a while, and they'd uh, corn all all over the place, like endless endless fields of corn. These guys these guys had like 4,500 acres of corn that they would regularly plant. Um, well, twice a year, I suppose. Or is it once a year? Twice. It is twice a year. So you need 20 bags of seed for every eight acres that you're going to plant. Let's assume it's corn. Can you write that as a rate? Yeah. Firstly, can you explain to me why it's not a ratio? What distinguishes a ratio from a rate? A ratio is the same, like, same unit. Very good. Same unit. That's exactly right. Do these have the same units? No. no. We're talking about bags of seed and we're talking about acres. So those aren't the same thing. So here if we're doing 20 bags of seed, we'd have 20 bags for how many acres? By the way, can you reduce that? So we should always be trying to reduce our rates as well. If we reduce this by four, we're going to get five bags for every two, yeah, you're right, two acres. You still okay so far? Mm -hmm. So if you need 20 bags for eight acres, it should make sense that you need five bags for two acres, right? If I had asked you for a unit rate, you could go one more step. I didn't ask you that here. So you could, you could have left it just as, as this right there. That's the correct answer. Uh, if I asked you for a unit rate, then you do the division and say, oh, okay, well, that means two and a half bags for every one acre. Do you follow me on that one? So if you need five bags for every two acres, that's two and a half bags for every single acre you need to plant. Now, the last one does ask you for a unit rate. It says, yes, you're driving 435 miles, and you're doing it on only seven gallons of gas. That would be your rate. And now the unit rate says go a step further, do the division. Do the 435 divided by 7. Basically, change that denominator into a 1. So you need to do that division so you can do it. So 435 divided by 7, how much do you get out of that? Round to the nearest tenth. 62.1. Your calculator will go on for a long time, right? Yeah. Remember, that when you divide by 7, you're going to get that. It repeats after like six digits. You remember doing the, the sevens in class before? When you divide, divided by sevens? Remember that? It will repeat, but it'll be a very long time. Okay. Round to the nearest tenth for me. So on your calculator, you should have, what is it? 62.14. 62.14. 64. 64. 64. 64. 64. 64. By the way, if you ever have to round something, you use this symbol. It's a squiggly equal sign, and it means approximately. It says you, you round it. It says it's about. 62 point, what's your calculator screen say after that? 1, 4. 1, 4. So if you had the 1, 4, you're going to round that 1, stay the same, you have 62.1. But do not forget your units. This is still, what, what are we talking about here? Miles per gallon. Is it 62.1 miles or 62.1 gallons? Miles. 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 Okay. For every yeah. gallon. Yeah. Good gas mileage or not? <laughs> That's great gas mileage. I wish we all got that gas mileage. It would be awesome. Set 400 miles on 7 gallons of gas, you get 62 miles a gallon. Would you raise your hand if you feel pretty good about rates, ratios, and unit rates? Right with that. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about in this class, we're going to talk about something called proportions.